Well, good morning, good morning, good morning. Just a little update for you. I'm just going to show you how it's going. The word is, in one word, slowly, <laughs> but it's going. And I've got a little bit of crystallization, but I've extracted over 40, 40 supers. My push-up frame popper-upper, my deboxing table is working brilliantly. Okay, you get the mess and you get the occasional drip of honey, but it pushes the frames out. I've got, I thought it'd be better to have a base that it sits on to leave it not touching the table, then all the shit that comes out of the boxes doesn't then stick back to the boxes. So that leaves that tidy. Liquid honey, look good. Mm. This is my decapping table working brilliantly. Um, the only thing is I needed a better support for the frame, but that will have to do for now. Occasionally they slip off while you're cutting and decapping. But that's kind of how it's going at the moment. All good. I am taking honey out from it. That, that's what's drained out overnight. So you can see, oh, this is quite light now. And what I'm going to do is all these cappings that are drained, fairly light and fluffy, I'm going to keep. But not just to melt down later. I'm going to keep them because I'm going to try and start some making some mead later on in the year. And what you need is wax cappings for that. So everything can be used. I've got the boxes. I've got everything I need to get going. My extraction... Machine, my Koenigan extractor, 32 frame, four times eight, is working great. It, uh, it rocks a little bit when you get uh, a little bit of crystallization in the frames, which I'm seeing now. Even after one day, we're getting some crystallization. So this has got to be finished this morning because it's got to be done. And I'm off out this afternoon to the bees because I've got to put these supers back on. But luckily on my side, the weather is crap and cold and it's not sunny yet. So that's the positive, okay? The windows aren't full of too much bee shit, so we're doing all right. <laughs> and also the first barrel is full. Beautiful. And the second one is over half full. That lovely honey. And that's gonna crystallize so quickly. Delicioso, Dora. Okay, so this is how I'm filtering my honey. Really simple. I learned this off my colleague. I've got two sticks. I've modified this a bit. You just used to use two sticks before. But what we do now is I've actually cut a groove in the two supports so that um, when the honey drips there, it doesn't go uphill. That's what you've got to remember is honey doesn't like to go uphill, like all liquids. You can see it there as well. The other side, the honey doesn't drip anywhere but downwards. So yeah, I have to change filters, but I can scrape it every now and again, like that, and, and it cleans the filter out. One of the things I did get when I bought a few things getting organized was, uh, was it gone? I think it's probably not here, but I bought a couple of these, some nice, plastic scraper tools like this soft silicon ones and they're essential for getting barrels and buckets clean really really good so that's a simple setup and you are asking me how am i going to move these barrels well they are going to go outside undercover in the shade in the dark so the sun's not on them and they never get any direct heat so the heat stays constant but if you look on the floor they are off the ground okay that's the key because if you look there I have a barrel mover, and that was a big investment, another quite big investment. Not huge, but still, I think, 400 euros for that, but it's worth its weight in gold, because with that, you can do anything. And it actually, as long as you can get underneath, but I've made it a little bit bigger than I really need, you can actually get underneath and lift up the barrel, because don't forget, that's 300 kilos there. So that's over, well, it's over 900 pounds, sorry, uh, 600 pounds in weight. Probably, I think, 700 pounds in, in American money. So for, times 2.2 to, usually that's right. Is it 2.2 pounds to a kilo? Approximately that, anyway. So it's going okay. I'm knackered. I was up late last night. A bit of a slow start yesterday, anyway. So I've got to get this um, finished. One mistake I did make, and I don't mind admitting, is I had my heater. This is my ready-made heater. It keeps the whole place warm. The whole building's well insulated anyway. But you can see here that I had the heater on the floor. Okay? And it was so warm, it could have caused a fire, but it didn't. But it's actually melted out 
the edge of these supers that's wax and honey on the floor just shows you how you've got to be so careful but it's only a little bit it only goes as far as there but you know just something to highlight you've got to be so careful when you do your setup but anyway everything is on the up just getting on with things. I want to finish this today. I don't know how long it's going to take, but I'm going to keep going. Got some lovely supers to extract. There will be some more crystallization. I can show you here. This is what it looks like. Uh, one frame here that was, you can see, just starting to go there in the corners. Now I could spin this and spin this and spin this, and you might get a tiny bit out, but you've got to work out the time it takes to do all that. And you've just got to be realistic and just say, right, I'll put it back on the bees. The bees will clean it out because the honey you have time to go and get afterwards will be decrystallized still rather than wasting time here. And that and the bees that you give these supers back to will be more grateful to it than you will be of having a few extra ounces or grams in your bucket. Do you see what I'm saying? It's that fine line you've got to, in the spring. You just got to harvest what you can and just look forward you, you can't start being emotional about losing this and losing that because that is the harsh stark reality of trying to get spring honey off it crystallizes damn quick i was looking at the calendar which you can see tucked away over there and it is four weeks since these supers were on so four weeks is nothing really and and i know that a lot of people out there will, under, will say, well, how on earth does your honey crystallize so quickly? Well, it just does. As I said before, I've got one apiary up the road that um, already is probably unusable, but I'm gonna keep that and scrape it out the supers because I've got plastic supers I can scrape off, bucket it up and sort it out later in the year. Because when I do get my building up in the floor, I'm putting underfloor heating powered by a heat pump and when I need the heat pump to put heat in is when it's relatively warm outside anyway. But I'll be able to raise that temperature in my super insulated room and then decrystallize all this. So I'm going through this this year, exhausted and tired and on my own with a, with a, not a, with, with equipment that I wouldn't have necessarily chosen if I had the chance to order it now. But it's complicated to explain. But um, I, I bought that extractor temporarily because I'm going to buy twin bigger extractors uh, that are more efficient and also I'm going to buy a decapping machine. Uh, as I said before, what I'm going to buy, I don't know yet, but the whole thing is when I do bring honey in, I'll be able to put it in that extraction, in that warming room and leave it for as long as I need to because it won't, it won't crystallize. And then I can come and extract it on my leisure. And that leaves me time to do my queen rearing. And that leaves me time to get back to my hives, you know, so I'm, what I'm saying is this year is just that year where I'm just going to have to make do. And I know it. But, you know, as I say, it is what it is. Have a great day. Speak to you soon. I better get my finger out and get this lot done. Bye for now.